Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Elden Ring playthrough. This is episode 8. Last time, we explored the southern region of, of Limgrave. And got to check out a whole bunch of cool stuff uh, over this side, towards the end specifically. Uh, where we have marked on our map the Walking Mausoleum, which is very, very cool. We found the fourth church of Marika. Another ever jail, a whole bunch, a whole bunch of stuff, and uh, this is another point that we're going to that we're going to check out as well. Uh, before we do, however, uh, I've run into our old friend, and what the reason why I'm over here, the reason why I'm over here, is because I was helping out. Uh, if you remember, a few episodes ago, we found that painting spot. Uh, over this way, somewhere, somewhere around here. Found that painting spot and got a cool item. And uh, someone in the Discord was asking where it was um, uh, on the map. So I'd run over here to just mark it on the map. And on my way past, found our lovely gentleman. So I was like, okay, you know what? I've booted up the game purely just to help someone out. Which I really love that I can do, by the way. We're playing this game at the same time together, and I think that's really amazing that we can have, like, that sense of community of, like, um, while I'm not partaking in, like, getting information about the game myself, I can give what I've experienced and explored about the game so far, which I think is really cool, is being, like, if people want uh, some help on, like, item locations and stuff, you can give that, and I think that's, that's really neat. But I found him... Uh, while walking past on the way to that. So we're going to start off our episode here because I'm spontaneously recording. Because I was like, ah, oh, I've booted up the game and it's 3 a.m. Time for Elden Ring? I think so. Time for Elden Ring. So we're going to have a nice cruisy 3 a.m. session of Elden Ring today. <laughs> I'm going to talk to our friend uh, once again. So we've met this guy uh, once. We've met this guy once before, and we can see under the we can see under the the little bucket that he's got on. So he's a he's an elderly looking gentleman, a little bit ragged under there. Let's see what he's got to say. Beautiful work, felling that dragon. Oh, and as such, there's something you might like to know. The heart you brought back. It's used in dragon communion. If you should find yourself overcome by hunger for the heart, yearning for its strength, then seek the decrepit church on the little island off the western coast. The little island off the western coast? Okay, hang on, let me write this down. So... I've forgotten... So this guy's name is... Yura. The Hunter of Fingers. Um, and Yura has pointed us to Dragon Communion Church. Dragon Communion Church. West Island of Limgrave. I guess I will I will write down. So if we ever find ourselves uh, getting a bit hungry. For the for the heart, let's mark this down. So that's this is a location that we'll need to go to. How do we get across the water? However, is uh, is anyone's guess. But interestingly enough, this is the second time we've encountered him. But he's talking about the dragon Agil, which we killed a long time ago. Now we killed it a while ago. Um, and we first encountered him on, around this bridge area, so it almost makes, it almost feels like you could have encountered him first here in relation to the dragon, and we've just encountered him later on. Uh, maybe he would even speak to you about the dragon if you spoke to him before taking on the boss fight. So that's also another thing to, to, I guess, think about is NPCs that might be talking about bosses in the area that you can already kill and then it will kind of automatically progress that that dialogue you must not forget though those who partake in dragon communion will one day shed their humanity 
Their hunger for dragon. Their yearning. Only worsens until the floodgates burst. Unleashing eternal torment. The strength of a mighty dragon. Magnificent. But deadly. It's no surprise that dragon communion is ruinous. Ooh, this is so cool. You must not forget, though, those who partake in dragon... One day they will shed their humanity. The, the strength of a mighty dragon. It's no surprise that dragon communion is ruinous. This guy's voice is so cool. And I actually love this hat. I love his little spin top. He can do a break dancing. He can do a bit of Beyblade action. I love that. This is cool. So, I've uncovered him there. I don't know if he'll move. I expect he will, considering we found him somewhere else. But we'll keep that marker on the map for now. Um, but what I, what I said that I was going to do last episode is we're going to check out this area here. Because this looks like a section of interest. Potentially this thing as well. Whatever that is. Uh, and then... We're going to check out, uh, we're going to check out Storm, Storm Hill. You know what? Maybe we'll also check out there as well. So I'm going to put a beacon there and a beacon there. So I can just remind myself of what to do. And something that I'd really like to point out as well with this, uh, with this game and this playthrough specifically is I feel like this has been such a huge help for me and like how my brain works and how I can get easily distracted or forget about some things or I'm a bit overwhelmed and I'll uh, I'll forget about things I mean it happens um, I really love this map because it helps me organize my thoughts uh, which is it's just really good like I whenever I've been in an episode and I've marked something and we get distracted because you find something cool you then I open up the map again and I'm like alright that's what we were doing or I was thinking about that or you know being like alright I'm gonna mark these down just so when I open the map I'm like oh yeah it was that it can jog my memory again this really helps to like keep me on track and I'm, I'm sure there might be quite a few of you who have the the same the same feelings you know of just like this game this game keeping you on track um, and you're able to kind of like Focus how you want to to spend your time and and in what areas, you know, so I guess we need to get up here In order to check out these areas, so this is one of the last things in this in this spot that I wanted to To check out. I think it looks like we can take this pathway up To get there. So maybe that would have been the better um, <laughs> That would have been the better grace point to get off on, but let's have a look. We'll run around here and see what we can do. I guess I, with this playthrough, this episode, I can officially say that the uh, that Elden Ring bug has, has got me real good <laughs> when I'm like opening the game up at 3 a.m. and I'm just like, let's let's play, let's see what we can find, let's have a fun time. I'm I'm wide awake and I just want to. I just want to play Elden Ring, you know? <laughs> Yellow Ember. Okay. Found a new house. Oh, God. And evil rats. Yeah, plague-ridden rat! Get out of here! Alright. Um, I'm going to assume that's an item crafting thing, that Yellow Ember. An ember taken from the eye socket of a corpse. A sign that the deceased suffered from the flame of frenzy. This grape has ripened and burst. The flame of frenzy. Anytime the flame is mentioned, guys, you know it's a uh, Dark Souls reference. <laughs> let's have uh, let's have a look around this. Let's have a look around this house. Nice. Well, we had a look around this house. <laughs> nice. House discovered. House explored. Rooftop con uh, rooftop conquered. <laughs> Can we fit down that chimney? <laughs> right. No secrets lie in wait. 
in that house. However, we're going to keep pushing over this way. Ah, oh, hang on. Oh yeah, that's that. Uh, this way. I want to see what's in here. Ooh, here we go. We've got something. So these are... Okay, so we've got rats. Oh, God. We've got rats and enemies that are like... Have like frenzy in their eyes. We're getting some unfortunate frame drops here as well. And I miss. Okay. What is this? What is this yellow ember doing to people? <gasps> Another church of Marika has been found. Oh no, never mind. Uh, the Kalu Baptismal Church. It does have a Marika statue though, so that's why I thought it was a was a Church of America. Ooh! Hello! Status effect. Oh shit. So, is this fr is this frenzy, this status effect? I'm about to get frenzied. God. We got another sacred tier? We do. Okay, so it's not a Church of Marika. Although it may as, may as well be. The Flame of Frenzy. Is this a new incantation, I think? Incantation originating from the Maddening Three Fingers. The Maddening Three Fingers, so we've got two fingers and three fingers, causes the yellow flame of frenzy to burst forth from the caster's eyes. Charging increases the range of the burst. The flame of frenzy deals damage and causes buildup of madness. Oh, so it's not frenzy, it's madness. I mean, it's kind of the same. This incantation also causes buildup of madness in the caster and is only effective against Tarnished. Okay. I just wonder if it's possible to like get up in like get up in these towers. I think this is as high as I can get on this thing. Trying to see if I can glimpse in there, see if there's anything. God, oh, oh, I'm in a weird spot now. <laughs> Hang on a minute, let me let me try something. Getting a little bit creative right now. Okay, I don't think I can reach that. There's trees in the way. Go. No. <laughs> All right, I don't think I can get any further than that. I was wondering if you can get in that, get in that door top you might you might just be able to do it but I also don't think there's gonna be any any reason to you know <laughs> apart from me just being mad this is what happens when you get almost frenzied you want to uh, ascend ruins with your with your steed the goal is to oh god the goal is to get up there Oh no, I'm perpetually falling for eternity. There we go. 
Guys, this is obviously what Miyazaki intended for the steed. As intended. <laughs> I feel like if that uh, ledge was just a little bit lower, just the tiniest bit lower, we'd be able to, to get up onto it. Right, one more attempt. One more attempt. This is what it's all about. If you can't get your trusty steed in places where you shouldn't be able to, is it even worth it? God, if only I could just jump up a little bit higher. It's like almost there. <laughs> and then dismount. I can't dismount either. The dismount would be a good option. This is like uh, a pretty good um, example of how nice it is to control torrent though like you can make those little tight jumps which is cool all right let me continue with whatever the hell is going on in here we're in the ailing village They're just all mad. Look at those... Look at their... Like, look at the positions that they hold themselves in. Eye of yellow, or is it? Is it? Do we just say yellow? What do you reckon? Eye of yellow or eye of yellow? Grown in lands afflicted by frenzy, it's used for its pain relieving properties. Though it's also known to be a dangerous intoxicant. Get some more of that. Get some more of that. Looks like there's a lot of these sort of like, I guess, houses or places, but you can't, they're all just sealed up, like you can't go inside of them. Ooh, flame crest wooden shield. A new shield. A tall, medium sized wooden shield, light for its size and easy to handle, carried by soldiers of the village that is afflicted by frenzy. The yellow flame is the symbol of the affliction, serving as a warning to those who might approach the village. It, it's literally like a frenzy plague. You got the plague ridden rats. Literally. And the villagers as well. So I feel as though whenever we get a location like this, oh, this is our first time seeing an an icon like this as well. Um, I'm pretty sure there should be a reason that it's listed as a location. I'm just trying to look if, to see if there's like an open door or anything like that. Or anything that we can like engage in here. Or whether it's this is just secondary to the to the church. I can see it looks like it doesn't look like there's a way into any of the buildings here so it's looking pretty self it's looking pretty self-contained it's just like you just pass through here for some frenzy so I guess that's what that spot ended up being uh, a church or we got a sacred tier for oh for some grace, there you go, some grace. And I will rest here to use our, to use our tier. To increase the amount 
of healing. Now, let's go here. Let's check out down below. So I think we've got to we've got to make our way down. We got a bridge here, so we haven't been we haven't been across here yet. So this is also a little bit of an unexplored area for us. We got a tower. We've got wind. We've got flowers down there. Lovely, beautiful. And that beacon we put is uh, down there. Okay, let's check out around here. Oh god. We've got a bridge we got a bridge troll. We've got a bridge troll. And this goes out to south of the lookout tower. Okay, cool. I feel pretty feel pretty comfortable pushing across the bridge. And then making our way down, I suppose. Look at that. Three of them. Three of the giant flowers. Loving that rickety bridge sound effect. That's cool. Alright, tree people. And we got some ruins. And we've been to the demi-human forest ruins. So we... And then that's the Erd tree up there. And we've been there. So it looks like we're heading down. I don't feel a huge desire to fight three giant plants, to be honest with you. That's the Earthbore Cave. Nope, I know exactly where I am. This is good. I love entering an area and knowing exactly where I am. And knowing that I can turn back. Like, safely being like, yep, we've been here. Let's turn back. Okay. You... I just wanted to test something. I wanted to see if you can actually get poisoned while riding on Torrent. And you can. But... You are immune to getting poisoned. Um, ooh, here we go. You're immune to getting uh, poisoned when you're like in a swamp or something. Okay, so this is what we marked out on the map, I'm pretty sure. This entrance. There we go. So this is something new as well. Morn Tunnel. Let's see. What can we find here? I'm hearing a lot of... I'm hearing a lot of what sounds like mining. Are we in another one of these caves with a bunch of crystal miners? Let's take a look, shall we? Demi-humans. Oh, shit. I thought he would be facing the other way. I thought I could have taken that a little bit slowly. I was investigating before I made any moves. Okay, not mining, but fighting almost. Ah, there is some mining taking place. I can hear... I can see the flashes. Oh, this is so cool, man. I don't know, there's just, like, the atmosphere of these games, I can't... It's just like, it's so fucking good. Oh. 
There's just such a variety in our locations that it's just such a thrill to explore. <laughs> like how they're like mining something and then you watch them like put it in their little backpack. So these are like similar to the crystal miners and they're, and they're tough too. They're tough to hit. But these ones do go down a lot easier than the ones in the uh, Salaya Caves. These guys are on break. Can I get these materials? I can. Oh, they're smithing stones. Oh my god. They're smithing stones and they're level one. Oh, fuck yes. Oh, this place just became a gold mine for me. I need level one smithing stones specifically. Oh, you guys are getting up. Okay. I was gonna, I was gonna let you enjoy your break, but it seems that we've got to do this then. I need a blunt weapon. Oh, they're susceptible to fire. They're susceptible to fire. I just panicked and was like, oh, maybe the fire breather will work. All right, looks like we found what we're doing. Well, we also need to look out for smithing stones. So I can level up my Uji Katana some more. Jumped right over the thrust. What's this? Oh, that's a material leaf. Oh, hell yeah. I love that you can see where other... I love that you can see where a lot of the crafting materials are in mines, because they've got people actually mining them. Alright, I'm going to put the torch in the, uh, in the attacking hand, so I can actually attack with the... I can actually attack with the torch see if this does anything. Ooh, hang on, this looks nicer. There you go. Okay, that's still smithing stone. That's a somber smithing stone. Yeah, fire's good. Fire does the job. Can you do a backstab with a torch? Shit, <laughs> I didn't think so. What are you gonna do with the torch? Just shove it inside them, somehow. Uh, that's where we came from, so we've got left and right through here. Soft cotton. This is a new one. Oh. We had preserving boluses already, but looks like we've got stanching ones. Blood loss escalates gradually. Okay, so this is rot, and this is for blood loss. Cool. Blood loss escalates gradually, causing great damage once the threshold is reached. Take one of these in a timely fashion to avoid such an event. Um, soft cotton. Attaching this cotton to the bottom of one's feet allows for temporary reduction in fall damage and sound. You must court danger, at the very least tread lightly. 
A soft but sturdy cotton formed from splitting open row of fruit in a particular manner. Soften your landings with, with cotton, apparently. That's how that, that's how that works. Oh shit. You can open this. I was expecting it to be closed from the other side. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Scaly misbegotten. Oh fuck. Flawless victory! Rusted anchor. A scaly misbegotten. There you go. <laughs> that's the that's the second enemy that's had misbegotten, so it's a, a description for them. So we've had the uh, I think it was Leon Leonine, so it's like a lion type one, and then this one is a, a different type. So we've just been given a rusted anchor. A rusty anchor wielded as a weapon. Each of its four flukes is thick and sharp, enabling piercing attacks. When the Tarnish left the lands between with their lord, one boat alone was said to have been left behind. Barbaric roar. There you go. So that's our that's our dungeon. Um, it will take us to it will take us to the opening. However, we have not yet fully explored. So we won't go we won't go to the to the entrance here. I still need this. And there's still another section just towards the beginning of one of the dudes still mining, so I'll head back up to the top. The dungeons and like the catacombs and like stuff like that, all of these little things to to explore that are like taken out of the open world and put in these areas are, are so cool. They're just like these little, little slices of life, you know, little slices of content that I think is really cool. Oops. I like that they're like quite a bit simple, at least in terms of um, in terms of scale and size, because I, I think it still retains that that nice impact, of a nice dungeon experience. Golden rune. Ooh, exalted flesh. A lump of animal flesh pickled in a medicinal solution mixed with fiery spices temporarily boosts physical attack. Considered a delicacy in the Badlands, this invigorating repast was for the exclusive benefit of those who deem heroes. So I'm pretty sure we can like... This is another thing, is in terms of item crafting, there's a lot that we can, that we can look at here, which uh, has our required items and uh, what they actually do. We haven't really gotten into this, like we can make blood bone arrows, which is awesome, causes blood loss buildup. We can make ourselves some some pots as well, which is pretty cool. The Rancor one. Enchanted by the ancient Death Hex. Throws at enemies to spawn vengeful spirits that chase down foes. In times of old, the dead were burned with ghost flame, and from those cinders are vengeful spirits. <laughs> Push someone in a privy, expect to get dung on your hands. It's literally a poop. It's a poop pot. The holy water pot. 
inflicting holy damage. Highly effective against those who live in death, even preventing them from rising again. Holy damage will keep those skeletons down. So we could actually craft some holy water pots to do that. The Golden Order has no mercy for those who trespass beyond life's bounds. We've got our fire pots. Maybe we could make, um, what do we need for this? Tarnished golden sunflower and mushrooms. Wow, you actually don't need that much. And you can make a total of five, because I have five pots. So I could keep, I could keep these and use them when I go into those catacombs. Or when we find skeletons and put them down. Um, I think those might be the most useful pots to use, because they're actually specific to an enemy type. Obviously, we can get some more cracked pots throughout the world if we want as well. We can make a few of these blood arrows. We can make four. Oh no, it makes plus. It makes times ten. Oh shit, it makes times ten of them. Blood bone arrow fletch times ten. So that makes forty. That makes forty arrows. Oh nice. That's not bad. With those, with only a few thin beast bones, that's a lot more arrows than I thought I'd get. That's cool. Um, well, instead of uh, the bone arrow, I'll put the blood bone arrows on. So they do 25. They do less damage, but blood loss is uh, is the appeal there. Blood loss is the appeal. The fact that you can just item craft on the go a whole bunch of this stuff just to, uh, with materials that you pick up is awesome. Uh, I think item crafting is a awesome addition. Item crafting is an awesome addition to this game. Very, very cool. <laughs> Sneak attack. Ooh, a large glintstone scrap. That's also new. Is. Large piece of glintstone tinged with unstable magic found in crystal tunnels. Um, you can produce a magic bolt, poor quality and thereby easily broken. A sorcerer wouldn't give it a second look. That's something that I should maybe try and equip in my quick menu a little bit more is some of these like throwing knives and stuff. Uh, this one's better for dexterity, it's got an S scaling. And it also has a build-up of blood loss. I really have like a focus on um, on blood loss builds. It seem um, in terms of like items that I have. I'm gonna equip that because that'll be that'll be pretty useful. God, let me tell you. When you have a controller with cables and also a headphone with cables and then you just end up tying the cables all over the cables and then all over your arms and legs, I wouldn't recommend. <laughs> wouldn't recommend. But it's better than it's better than batteries and recharging stuff all the time. Alright, I think we've cleared out this dungeon, which is nice. So we can leave now. Actually, there's one more, isn't there? There's another dude towards the beginning. I've come for your smithing stone, please. Nice. Um, that being said, with all these smithing stones that we've obtained, this might be a good idea if... Um, a good time for us to go to the round table hold again because it has been some time since we've done a proper good um, walk around um, around the round table hold so now that we've cleared the dungeon we can we can um, it doesn't have the lack of teleport symbol so we can actually go. So let's go to the Table of Lost Grace. Let's go back to the round table because we'll see if there's any updates with our our characters um, around this area. Since we've done since we've done a few things in the world, you know? Just a just a few things. 
mostly I'm here to see our uh, blacksmith, which is, uh, I wrote their name down now, which is Hugh, the blacksmith. Ah, you appear to be doing well. Well then. Well then. May the golden order shine through you. And this is D. Those who live in death should be left well alone. All the more should you spy a mariner among their number. So he's talking about those who live in death, which are like the skeletons and stuff. And if we spot a mariner among their number, which I don't think we have yet. Uh, this guy, I believe his name is... Dialos, and he's looking for Lanya, his servant, which we still haven't found yet. To tell me if you she's a servant. She's been like him. I've lost count. Honestly. Yeah. Oh, your divinity, have mercy and grant me forgiveness. The road is yet long. A god is not easily felled. But one day, without fail, you will have your wish. So please grant me forgiveness, Queen America. Huh. You, is it? I didn't notice you there. I'll be doing my job, same as ever. Just lay out your arms. Asking for Queen Marika's forgiveness. We can ask him about the prayer. Those words were not meant for you. I may be prisoner to you, tarnished lot. But my prayers are mine. And mine alone. Well, I've had my say. I'll be more careful too. Oh, is he saying he'll be more careful to uh, not not do any more prayers? What is our skill on the bow? Mighty shot, right? Okay, I can strengthen my Uja Katana to plus three, which means I can finally now upgrade it with Smithing Stone level two, which means I can upgrade it to plus four, and now I can upgrade it to plus five, and now I need one more Smithing Stone two to upgrade it to plus six. That, we're finally upgrading it. <laughs> like, finally upgrading it. Um, it's been some time. I think I'm also going to... Oh, it's it's hard to make the choice because smithing stone, like level one smithing stones don't seem too common. There's not even, ha there hasn't even been an opportunity of where we can buy them yet. So when I'm looking at things to upgrade, I'm cautious. I'm cautious at what I want to actually upgrade with them. The Curve Sword, the Chatel, was actually one that I was keen on using with the Spinning Slash. To, to use that for my for my character. That might be a, an interesting one to, to level up. Same as the same as these, the Hook Claws, considering they've got a C for deck scaling as well. They could be kind of fun. And also they have a Blood Loss Builder. <laughs> put one in there for hook claws level one for now especially because our jump attack is still enhanced by it as well but our Uji Katana is going to do some more damage now it's been, it's been some time <laughs> we've just had it at plus two this whole time and it's still been quite good to be honest I don't feel like it's been like average or anything. It's been been pretty decent. Just trying to see if maybe anything has changed in these rooms since we last opened them with the keys, but it doesn't look like it has. I think we still have we still have the the boon. Um, we still have the gift from. Uh, from fear, Baldekin's blessing, bestowed by a deathbed companion, protection of a hidden temple in the guise of a bed changer, uh, bed chamber. So it just allows us to temporarily boost poise. Maybe I'll just use that at some point. I am pleased to see you again. Would you like me to blessing? Is Would you like? 
Ben, good day to you. Politely decline. Good day to you, she says. Not still not able to talk to the guard. Uh, you what is it? Just the same details asking about all of the people I need to kill. <laughs> I wonder where, um, I wonder where Nephili went off to. She's like moved on, I guess. I guess we'll see her around somewhere. I wonder if she'll spawn in the same spot or if she'll move around somewhere else. Nothing, nothing new really in here, but we've taken our opportunity to at least improve our gear with uh, with Hugh, which is very good. So now that I've done that area, uh, I'm going to be walking around and exploring uh, once again uh, the Storm Hill area because I think there's like there's a whole bunch of stuff over here that we haven't even looked at. So we're going to do Storm Hill. Um, there's an NPC here and an NPC here, so let's start here. Let's start at Stormhill Shack and work our way around and work our way backwards from that and see what we see what we can find. Storm Hill. Yeah, this woman. A pleasure to see you. Did you give the little chrysalids the message that I love them? And that despite my craven heart, I'm sure I'll be joining their club soon enough. All oh, right. She wants. She gave us the. She gave us the jellyfish ashes. Prone to tears, the jellyfish girl searches for a distant home. Um, we have not done that. Um, we have not done that. So I guess I need to do something with um I, guess I need to do something with the with the chrysalids. Um can I use my lantern on oh, my horse? Yes I can. There you go. Okay. We haven't this is an area that we haven't explored much. Uh, there's a lot of yeah, there's a lot of those guys. There's a lot of those giants around. So I'm I'm gonna just try and comb through it I guess as as much as as much as possible as much as that can be allowed god those those frames those those storm hill frame drops <laughs> I'll be very excited for for us to get a very smooth version of this which we'll get eventually we'll get eventually oh I've got my bow out It's not, it's not killing it for me. Obviously it's noticeable at points, but it's, it's okay. It's not causing me to like lose or rage quit or anything. And then I'll say that and then my game will like crash. <laughs> What's this up here? Ooh, hello. This is one of the finger. This is one of the finger readers, except not in the round table hold on the outside. Oh, bless 
you. <sighs> Head to the foundation of gold tarnished. Traverse Rhea Lucaria. Glintstone Eventide. And reunite the half crescents at the Grand Lift. Oh, but the bridge is collapsed and cannot be crossed. Only, why should that matter? Stormvale Castle still stands tall. When you just you find an NPC that just drops a lot of lore and names at you all of a sudden, you're like, ah, shit, <laughs> I can't write all this down. Okay, so she reads our fingers and then she's like, go and do that stuff. But the bridge is but the bridge is out, which is uh, I assume this, which would go up into like Rhea Lucaria, I guess, all the way up there. Cause we know that this is Leonia. Once we walk out of here, that takes us to Leonia. Classic case of the bridge being out. And then, obviously, she's just saying, well, you need to just go to, uh... Nice, you just need to go through, uh, through Stormvale Castle instead. Oh, this takes us, um... I see, we've been down here before. And we were walking around this area being like, what's down here? But, like, it's a way down to go up and around and then into the castle, I suppose. Okay, so we got Nomadic Warrior's Cookbook. Uh, number seven. Soft cotton, stanching boluses, and rainbow stone arrow. A rainbow stone arrow. That's quite. That's quite an interesting mixture. All right. Well, we found one of the finger readers who sat on this bridge. So put a marker there for her. Then we're just going to run around and jump on our wonderful mount until we find anything around Storm Hill that stands out. A lump of flesh and some bats. I have to deal with that unfortunate problem that I think um, it's a little demanding. Um with all of the wind and everything. Wild strikes, Ash of War. I guess that the wind in this area is a little demanding, so it makes the frames kind of go all over the place. Wild strikes. Swing armament with wild abandon. Hold to continue swinging. Can be followed up with a normal or strong attack. Uses uh, usable on axes and hammers, as well as curved swords and great swords. That's cool. Oh shit, ooh, it's a bit of a jump. Sorry. Sorry, Torrent. Okay. I'm gonna go push through this way. This is one of those locations that makes me really like love and appreciate like weather effects though like it's so cool especially like traveling this place at night right now because you can do it during the day but it's just like i don't know there's something so cool about traveling uh this world at night it's so cool i really like it uh, i think there's an item there that we must have already gotten in the past i'm trying to explore underneath these bridges Trying to explore underneath the bridges. That guy's angry. Because there might be, I don't know, it might be like an NPC or someone like covering from the, uh, taking cover from the harsh winds and we might find them in there. There's a lot of nothing over this way because obviously we've reached an edge there. Ooh, have we been? Oh, we've been to this before. I've run up and been here. 
because we we fought an invader so I remember this because there's a little spirit here it's talking about being let in Flaming slugs? Flaming slugs? Maybe. Flaming slugs. With grey violet. Okay. That's interesting. There's a scarab up there. Whoa. Hello. Oh, that's just a normal enemy on a horse. <laughs> I, I just haven't seen another enemy on a horse in a while. I just went, <gasps> ooh. Nice. You got knocked off your horse. Yeah, that's just funny. I just haven't seen an enemy on a horse for a while. So it's like, <gasps> oh my god. He got absolutely schooled, however. of War, Golden Vow. He dropped something cool, though. Skill passed from antiquity among the knights of the capital. Raise armament aloft and pledge to honor the Erd Tree in battle, granting self and nearby allies increased attack power and defense. Nice. So it's a buff. I actually really love the, the variety of the Ashes of War in this game. Very, very cool. Somber smithing stone. Nice. Okay, this is a good... This is a good point to maybe... Just trying to see if we can get like a vantage point by being high up and we can kind of... Investigate the area and see if there's anything to... To look for. Again, maybe this is the downside of exploring at night. Because maybe that would be... Maybe that would be a bit brighter. It's currently night time, so it should move naturally into day. I don't know how long it takes for it to move around with time, but it will. Eventually. Ooh, is this going to be another one of those big enemies getting up? That looks like that dude could get up. What do you think? I reckon. Looks like another graveyard for a big boy. There's a bunch of demi-humans down there. Let's go down the... Where are we? There's the Warmaster Shack. Yeah, let's explore this and then I'll go back up here and curl around. To end up back at Warmaster's Shack. Anything of interest just here? Just a bunch of villagers sitting, chilling out. See, see, there's no frame drops around this area, but there's there's uh, significant frame drops in that area with Tree Sentinel in that main area, and then there's more significant frame drops when you're on the main path on Storm Hill. But when we're just like off the beaten path like this, it's smooth as butter, dude. So it's really interesting when when it comes into play. Hello, I knew you'd be here. I knew you'd be awake. I'm gonna smack your feet.
just being a giant slayer. It ain't no thing. Again, though, no item dropped. No item dropped when you kill them. Just the satisfaction of defeating them in combat. Ooh, a lance talisman. Knights on horseback are deadly foes. They see all below from their lofty position, meeting little meaningful resistance as they charge ahead. So enhances attacks while on horseback. You know what? I'm going to equip that right now because I am on a horse and I'm not doing jump attacks. So that is, that is perfect for me. It's like it was made for me right now. <laughs> You're like, you're, you're exploring on a horse. You need this. I do quite enjoy the talismans in this game as well. That's also really sweet. Alright, we're going to head over in this direction now. Dude. <gasps> oh my fucking god. Oh my god, I need to get over this fucking side. Is that what I fucking think it is, dude? Also, there's a spirit over here, so let's... Ooh. Ooh. Hello. More than a spirit. Hold on, there's a room. Alright, wait a minute. Just so I remember this, over the other side here. Marker. Unthinkable. Our hallowed resting place is violated. To refuse the Erd Tree's call to return, to live within death. Sickening. Hey, we found something. We found something. And I think we just found our pop boy. Death touched catacombs. I've been trying to find pop boy passively. <laughs> passively for the longest time. Okay, we're in catacombs. Do you know what works out? The fact that I made holy water pots. In case we need them. We'll see. Otherwise I can just avoid them. We don't even know if we're going up against skeletons in here. It could be gargoyles. But we're in the death-touched catacombs. Okay, let's get these open. Who's gonna be our who's gonna be our boss in the death touched catacombs? Skeletons. God oh, damn it, skeletons. Obviously I don't wanna waste my holy pots, so I'm only just kinda Oh I'm only wanting to use them in, like, a desperate moment. I wonder if it can do area of effect damage. Like, if I cast it, throw it on a group. Okay, uh, it didn't even kill. It didn't even kill. It just did damage. There's a lot of skeletons. More than I would like to engage with. More than I want to. Okay, this one's easy. This one's an easier one. To pull the lever and open the door. There's just a lot of skeletons. Just, just a lot of skeletons. It's okay, just stay calm. Skeleton army can't hurt you as much as they want to. There's an item, that's all. the only reason I'm here. Ah! <laughs> I got another one! I don't need that, but that's fine. I got another Uji Katana. That's fine. Alright, I'll leave now. Stay calm, and you will not get overloaded with skeletons. It'll be okay. Okay, who's our who's our boss? Of the catacombs. 
Black Knife Assassin. This is a bit of a bit of a cool looking room too. It looks slightly it's slightly different, like it's darker. Oh shit, okay. Ah, oh, look at his health. <laughs> oh, look at his health. Alright. That's funny. Ooh, look at those dodges. <laughs> okay. I don't like how much damage the Uji Katana did, so I'm switching to a straight sword. Oh, he still knocked me back, even though I blocked the heavy attack. Wow. I want this to, I just wanted to turn it into a cooler fight than a two hit wonder with the Uji Katana. So it's much more fun this way. Assassin's Crimson Dagger. So I used that square off ability for the first time, which is uh, re putting it in the ready position and then doing that upward slash for the for the final blow. That was cool. But yeah, I don't know. As soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, I just did half of his health. <laughs> no, thank you. I'll put a I'll put a weaker weapon on, and we'll uh, we'll have some fun with that. That was much more fun for me. For a for a little one there. Sometimes it's cool to be strong and just to like overpower them, but then other times it's like I don't want to turn it into too much of a joke because I was like I actually want to listen to the music and see his move set, and that was cool. Death root. Okay, so we got a key item, death root, and we've also got a weapon. So let's have a look at this weapon. Uh, hi, where is the weapon? Oh, is it not a weapon? Maybe I'm... Again, I should really get into the habit of reading the category that the item is in when it drops, huh? Instead of just reading it and assuming it's a weapon. I mean, it was a dagger, so I was like, I assumed it was a weapon. Uh, death Root, a source that gives rise to those who live in death. The beast clergyman found at Bestial Sanctum in the distant east collects and devours these roots. On the night of the dire plot, the stolen rune of death enabled the first death of a demigod. Later, the rune of death spread across the lands between through the underground roots of the great tree sprouting in the form of death root. So this is a source that gives rise to like the skeletons, the, those who live in death. There's a beast clergyman found at a bestial, bestial or a bestial sanctum in the distant east collecting and devouring these roots. So if we give that... I wonder if that has an effect on the skeletons that we'll find in the land if we give it to this person. Um, where is this dagger? Is it, is it a weapon? And am I just blind? It's definitely not in this list. Where is this thing? Oh, that's a talisman. Assassin's Crimson Dagger. Critical hits restore HP. Wow. This charm is modeled after the darkly gleaming blades used in the Night of Black Knives. Those which give the demigods their first taste of death. So it's a talisman. Perfect. Cool. 
pretty sure this room is quite similar to most of the other catacombs rooms in layout, but it looks a little bit different. It feels like it looks a little bit different. The roots here are the same though. These things. Let's return to the entrance. Those, that's our catacombs. And guess what we get to do now? Guess what we get to do now? The most exciting thing ever is we're going to jump over this gap. Oh, hang on. I'm going to jump over this gap and meet a character that I've been wanting to meet forever. Oh no, I missed the jump. Come on. Hello? Can you hear me? Help me. I'm stuck. Hello? Hello? Anyone? I've waited so long for this moment. Oh, my stars. I'm so happy to see you. I am Alexander, also known as the Iron Fist. And as you can see, I'm stuck here. Please, can you help me out of this? Alexander the Iron Fist. Of course I'll help you. My thanks, a thousand thanks. Just give me a good smack from the rear with something nice and big. And I'll pop clean out, I'm sure. Don't dally. Uh, there's no need to fret. I'm very well trained. <laughs> Give it your all, I say. He's very well trained in being smacked from behind. Come on. Give me a good smack from behind with something nice and big. I'll pop clean out. I'm sure of it. <sighs> all right. Now, I can't equip either of those hammers. I'll try it with the with the Uchi. God, I feel I feel so bad because I'm like doing. Uh, it feels like I'm killing you. Oh, there he is, triumphant delight. Oh, I'm in the hole. I sit in this hole now. Uh, and he's in that position, by the way. That position where he's crossed his arms is the same as that giant pot that we saw guarding uh, that thing at, at Kaled. It's very interesting. Okay, so we got Triumphant. I'll do that. I'll switch that out from Grovel to Mercy. Where's the Triumphant one? Triumphant Delight. So triumphant. We got him. Well played, good sir. Well played. Though that mighty wallop of yours almost spelt the end of me. <laughs> ah. Well, I'm out now, and that's what counts. I thank you. And as a token of my appreciation, I'd like you to have this. Oh, some exalted flesh. Wonderful. Where? How does he talk? Is there a person in there, or is the pot, you know... Is there a person in this one in particular, or are the pot sentient, and it's learned the ability to speak somehow by mimicking vocal cord patterns while it's a pot with arms? Don't question it. Don't question it. Just believe. Believe in the pot boy's voice. Alexander the Iron Fist needs no explanation for his voice. Once again, the pleasure is mine. A warrior jar. I am the warrior jar known as Alexander. Iron Fist Alexander. I journey to the east, where I intend to further my education in the ways of war. And beyond these lands lie the scarlet, rot-blighted Kaled Wilds. And upon their southern edge is Redmain Castle, in which a festival of combat is being held. I'd heard whispers of such festivities before. Doesn't the notion set your breast aflutter? Yes. <laughs> So, it looks like Alexander is going to head east. He's going to journey to the east, and we've just got our first bit of information of what lies past Kaled. So, Kaled is here, but beyond that, Redmain Castle, where there's a fight club happening. So, I've written that down with Alexander the Iron Fist, that we'll journey to the east and find somewhere called Redmain Castle. That's cool. 
I'm heading eastward. There he is, eastward. Redmain Castle, on the southern edge of the scarlet, rot-blighted Caelid Wilds. I've heard there's to be a festival held there. Do you know what's awesome? Is he literally tells us the direction he's going and the location. I love that. I love a very clear and concise NPC that's like, I'm heading here. I might see you there. Instead of an NPC that's like, oh, ho, ho, I'm about to disappear and you will never find me. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's cool. We found him. We found him. I'm so happy about that. That's awesome. No fucking way, dude. We've been here. I swear to God, I've been here, and this is where we first encountered the land octopus and fought them. If I just pushed around the corner, I would have seen Alexander episodes ago. <laughs> I would have seen Alexander episodes ago, dude. I swear I fought in this exact thing with the octopus. The octopus must have just traumatized me to the point where I just turned around. What a shame, because we were so close. Oh. oh, this is that bridge. This is that bridge that that, that dude's on. So we used uh, we used binoculars to observe this guy ages ago as well. Nice, we found a spot of grace. This man is angry. He's angry that he's on this bridge. He's been put on guard duty and he's all alone and he has no friends. If only Alexander would come through and rough him up a bit on his journey eastward. Saints Bridge, this is what this place is called. Saints Bridge, and that'll allow us to cross over into a section that we have not yet explored before, which is actually really, really cool. Uh, so I guess that this marker symbol we probably won't have to keep here for long because Alexander's gonna, gonna move on. <laughs> such is the, uh, such is the way of things. Shall we battle this... this fool? This... angry pumpkin head. I want to wear his thing as a hat. Oh! Ah, oh, thank you. He, he crushed the skull for me, that's good. Look at that helmet, like, what is that? Sanctuary stone. Oh, that item disappeared right in front of my eyes when I pressed the button to pick it up. That's unfortunate. Okay, I don't know if I want to go over this bridge just yet. Oh, another smithing stone is good. I think I still want to check out this area around the Warmaster's shack and here before we push on into a new spot. But this has been quite enlightening. More land octopuses down there. I think we've... Yeah, because this is Murkwater stuff. We've been... We've done Murkwater. We've done below this bridge. So, that's done. Let's go up here. Push on this road. An enemy, an enemy encampment. There's a, there's a treasure chest. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay, this is very unfortunate timing. This is just, oh, this is very, that's so unfortunate. This is very unfortunate. Just nothing but a good jump and a dodge. Oh, he's God! He just God counted me. How cool. Oh, he stance. Oh, he stance broke me twice! 
<laughs> oh shit. He's just making me panic, this guy. I love it. It made me unnecessarily panic there, sir. I I don't know how I didn't die. Especially with the dog involved. It's like my biggest weakness at all times. <laughs> we have cleared a camp. We got the beast crest. He's a shield. A medium sized metal shield, easier to handle than a kite shield. A beast at its crest? Mate. I'm reading. Oh, I'm reading. Where did you even come from? Allow me to read, please. This is reading time with Mapo. Fight with passion, but become not its prisoner. See? Was that so... Was that such a long wait for you guys to get into battle? To allow me to read those simple words? anything up there, so that's okay. Exalted flesh. Okay. I haven't... Oh, yeah. I haven't been in there yet. So we also gotta go in there. Maybe we'll get some more smithing stones. Some level 1 smithing stones in there. Which will be good for some other weapons that we've got. Where's Warmaster's shack? Right here. Let's check in with this guy again, because he sells ashes of war, doesn't he? Hello there, sir. There you are. Decided to bear the torch of my battle hearts. What do you have? You reckon we could use War Cry and that would get the attention of that wolf knight? What do you think? Give a war cry to rally the spirit and increase attack power. Spinning slash seems pretty cool. Impaling thrust. Quick step. Storm blade seems pretty sick actually. Lost skill of storm veil. I might get that. And then I kind of want the war cry as well. Well. Until we meet again. Okay. Um, let me get... I'll get the other one as well. Because it costs 800. Oh, not had your fill, eh? Worry not. Have enough to keep you busy. <laughs> uh, I'll also get Warcry. Well... Um, which one can Warcry be put on? Warcry on melee armaments, daggers, swords. Okay, cool. Melee armaments. So, I'm going to do that. Uh, let's do Ashes of War. On this straight sword. Um, uh, actually, maybe... I'll put it on the Claymore. No, I'm just gonna put it on Lord Swan Straight Sword, the war, uh, the war cry. Oh, affinity granted. You can change it. So this is what this is. So you can change it to heavy, so it gets rid of the deck scaling. Okay, I see what this is about now. Cool. So better strength scaling, but gets rid of decks. So we're just gonna do standard. So now that's got war cry. Because I want to take that to... I want to take that to this fucking wolf dude and see if that does anything. Because he's like howling. What if I do like a... What if I do like a call of the wild to him and I do a roar cry and then he, he's like, yes, let's go. And then he actually does something. I'm going to travel right back to the... to the dude if nothing happens. But, uh... I'm, I'm curious. 
Love that bear just knocking down trees as it walks past. Just don't attack me, sir. I'm on a mission today. Need to equip the sword. To actually do the war cry. Don't. Don't. You leave me alone. You leave me alone. Okay, so this wolf howling is super obvious. Like, he is howling so loud for you to, like, notice him. Is he the same one from the loading screen as well? Oh, hang on, that's barricade shield. Get that off. Notice me! What do we do about this guy, man? What do we do about that guy? I was like, I was like maybe we need to yell at him. <laughs> I don't think we have a, I don't think we would have a howling ability. I don't think we would have a howling one, but maybe you could like summon the loon wolf ashes. I don't even, I, I, I don't even, I don't even know. I, I really don't even know. It's a, it's a mystery even to me. A mystery even to me. Um, so this is Stormgate. I believe we've walked around this area before. I'm pretty happy with what we've just discovered here, so I think, with that in mind, probably a good idea for me to now do this. I wonder if that means we'll be pushing into Kaelid soon. I wonder if, I wonder if I'll end up just pushing into, into Kaelid soon, because we've obviously found these places when we got teleported into Chaos. But it could be a good idea. Who knows? We're a bit we're a bit stronger now, we're a bit more confident. Got a feeling for how things go. And then we can also push out into Leonia too. Especially now that we know that Alexander is gonna be heading east. Maybe maybe uh, that makes it quite appealing for me. <laughs> um, I'm gonna to go to Agil Lake North and we'll check out this cave that we've got the beacon on. We'll check out this cave. I'm gonna just put our uh, bra shield, I'll put our bra shield back on, and then I'll only put that tortoise shell one on. I'll put that tortoise shell shield on when we're going up against some some challenging enemies that hit that hit pretty hard so I think we want to be down here yes because there's something there for us we should be able to make this drop I believe we should we should be able to make this drop <laughs> This will be this will be fine. This will be fine. We'll find a safer way down. We'll find a safer way down. There you go. This is a, this is a bit more sensible. <laughs> Oh crab. Oh crab. I don't want to deal with crab. I want no part of crab. Let's go in here. Where are we? Limgrave tunnels. The Limgrave tunnels. So this looks to be the same layout as the place that we were just in. So we should be able to get some nice, uh, some nice smithing stones in here and find ourselves another boss. Find ourselves another boss. The Limgrave Tunnels. Alright, I wonder how much uh, stronger my Uji Katana is to hit now. They are very resistant to the, to the sword. That's for sure. They are very resistant. 
Nice, yeah, more smithing stones. Good shit. Oh no. Rats. Plague ridden rats. Another smithing stone? Oh god. Push down here. Oh, another lift. Another lift to take us deeper in. I got confused for a second there. I was like, wait, I didn't just run back to the entrance. I didn't see any. I didn't see a grace point. Another lift. Oh no. You got a dog down here. In these conditions? This is no place for a dog. Even if they are as rotten as these ones. Oh, you're just still going, aren't you? You're just still going, aren't you? Look at how many fucking... <laughs> they just keep going, dude. They just... That's, that's the thing. They're used to mining all day. They can just keep fucking... Keep fucking smacking away at you with that hammer, with that pickaxe. Okay, there's a smithing stone over here. Oh, wait a minute. How are you? Is there a boss in this one? Interesting. This is a dead end. Got a smithing stone. There might not be a... There might not be a boss in this one. I don't think there's a pathway in here that we have... Uh... Hmm. Did I miss a pathway? I went down there, didn't I? I went down there. Because this is a dark room, yeah. Just wondering if I'm going crazy. If I missed a room. I was expecting there, because this is kind of like... Same layout as the one that we were just in. I was expecting a boss. Turns out there's just a few... Just a few stones. Just a few stones together. That's about it. And we can't fast travel out. I'm a bit confused about that one. Oh! Hang on. Ah! Just glimpsed that. Hold on. Hold on a minute. Just glimpsed this. <laughs> There's more. No, not that much more. <laughs> okay. Just a golden rune. I was like... <gasps> No. Oh shit. <laughs> you ever just slip and fall and die? Because I do that a lot. <laughs> just the old classic slip and fall and die. Oh well. And 
There's our runes. Not enough runes for me to worry about going back for anyway. Don't really care. Alright, we can now fast travel. So that tunnel's taken. Look at look at this. Just for some reflection. This is about 16 to 17 hours of gameplay. Because what you've seen so far in the playthrough has been pretty much just raw footage. Essentially, it's just been unedited exploration through the lands between. So we're looking at about 16 to 17 hours right now. And we've we've just we're on this section of the map. We've got we've got a long way to go. We've got a long way to go. So I'm gonna head back to this location on Saints Bridge and we'll check out what this is. This looks pretty cool. We got another cave, so I'm sure these these caves that we find on the map are our smithing stone like locations to get those rare ones and now it makes sense why I haven't been getting s fucking smithing stones just in the wild by playing the game for so long it's because they're hidden in these little caves and I haven't been picking them up I'm gonna avoid the scary man I was trying to jump over him just then but that didn't work <laughs> he still smacked me Okay, so we're still, yeah, still in Limgrave. Ah, another merchant. Nice. Okay. Just, you know, remembering that we we have not been to this area before. So this is our second... This is our second merchant that's been playing his instrument. The first one that we found down, downstairs in the underground. This one also doesn't have a mule with him. Oh, dear. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. Uh, are you here as a customer? <laughs> Nomadic merchant. All right, what is what have they got? Oh, a bandit mask. Lovely. Ooh, a note for some flame chariots. Containing information about flame chariots. Favored by bandits for hiding their faces. It also provides some protection against poison. Um, pickled turtleneck. Another cracked pot. Warrior's Cookbook for a Pickled Turtleneck and Poison Arrows. Short Sword and a Halberd. Alright, hold on. Uh, uh, oh, is there anything wrong? No, I'm just going to sell some stuff so I can get some money, please. So I can buy some stuff. Um, I forgot how much your stuff costs, so let me get that. Then I'll get that. And then... I want the cookbook as well. So I'll get that as well. Thank you for your business. Oh, I must apologise. I, 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 I'm afraid I've very little to offer. That's okay. That's alright, buddy. Alright. Information about the flame chariots. Um, beware the fire monks chariots bearing the faces of giants. A well-aimed blow to the chimney on top may prove effective, but opportunities for a plunging attack will be rare indeed. So beware the fire monks chariots. I wonder if that is related to this area, like if we're going to have some flame chariots in this area or something. God, the sense of wonder right now, you know? When you're just like, I want to go over there. I want to go over there. I want to go to that thing. And you know what? This is one of those games where it, they actually get to do the thing where they go, hey, you see that thing all the way in the distance? Yeah, you get to go over there. So many games false advertise that shit. This game has that. This game has that. Naturally, every game has its restrictions and walls and boundaries that you can't go absolutely everywhere but this game has a lot of locations where it's straight up just like yes you see that thing in the distance that has taken your interest you can go there and I just think that's amazing okay so we've been down there because that's the artist's shack oh actually I wonder if the painting in the artist's shack changes over time now that we've found that first painting. I wonder if it changes. And if not, 
I wonder if there will be ways for us to find other paintings in this world. So it could be a good idea for us to double check the artist's shack again at another point. Alright, so that's our merchant. This is Limgrave. Hey, those who those who live beyond death. I'm gonna say a bit of a no thank you to that one. Holy shit. Oh! Whoa! Actually, what the fuck? Oh, this is what that dude was talking about? This is what D was talking about? The Mariner? Is this our Mariner? Does that mean... Nope, he's coming back to life too. Far out. I... I wonder... I wonder about this, because they come back to life, right? So if you use holy damage, they will, they will no longer come back to life, right? But my thought process on that is, if I just respawn and reload the area, will they just be there again? And I'll have to use holy damage again to kill them permanently, and it's just once per, you know once per existence, as soon as you rest somewhere, they'll just come back anyway, so it's like... I may as well just run away from them, because it doesn't seem like there's any point to kill them properly. Summon Water Village Outskirts. Okay, so this is Summon Water Village. Cool. Before we push into the village itself, we'll explore the outskirts. the foot of that tower. Look at that. Look at that water. That water looks so nice. You just want to swim in it. But you can't swim in this game. No swims. No swimming allowed. That's banned. It's a banned activity. Imagine swimming and then being able to dive. I'd love it. I'm just running along the cliffside to see if there's any fucking random NPC that decides he wants to go and be, like, pensive and stare out of a... stare out of a thing. Do you reckon there'd be a merchant there? And it just isn't loading in because it's on a distance? I feel like we'd see it. I feel like if there was a merchant there, we'd see, but then at the same time, why would there be a fireplace lit? If it didn't want to be... if it wasn't inhabited. Or in use. I love that it looks like all of the... yeah, all of the zombies just go back. <laughs> they just go back underground to like, oh, that guy left. Go back to bed. Dig yourselves back in your hole. Alright, summon water village it is. Let's take a look and see what, what cursed things are going on in here. I mean, I say cursed things, but do you see how beautiful that, that that just this thing looks like? Oh man! Oh no! It's an undead village. Whoa! Wow! Is this our mariner? Yep, tibia mariner. This is our mariner. A mariner is in like an actual marine mariner, right? That makes sense. This is what D was warning us about. Oh no. Uh, where's the actual enemy? Where is the actual enemy? This is literally the Witch of Hemwick right now.
There you are. Look at you all the way over there. You there on your fucking... <laughs> fucking magic boat, man. Magic boat, man. Summoning spell. <laughs> he just has boat attacks. He's so funny. Oh, I missed my... I missed my chance for the stance attack because of that stupid skull guy. What is that attack? Okay. Guys, if you don't mind... I'm busy with the main boy. Oh. <laughs> Can you stop spraying me with water? It's like, stop. Stop spraying me with water. I'm playing in the water right now. <laughs> That's so fucking cool. Purple magic water. What are you doing up there? Enemy felled. All right, and we got more death root. Skeletal militia man ashes. Okay, I feel like we should go and talk to D now at the round table hold that we've dealt with. Uh, what he was talking about: those who live uh, with death beyond death, uh, and we've killed a mariner as well. We'll check in with him. Ashen remains in which spirits yet dwell. These are the spirits of militiamen who live in death and will continue to rise again until properly finished off. This is the grotesque fate of those who come into contact with death root. Okay, so they come into contact with death root and that is the result. So, killing the mariner. Ah, oh, these guys are still here. Okay, we only killed some. All right, these guys will still be alive. Makes sense. I thought, I was wondering, I was like, I wonder if this whole area was just about to get cleared of enemies because we killed the, the boss. That was a cool boss. It's pretty interesting. Um, ooh, and we have a thing that is sealed by a stone sword key. I really need to be buying more of these and I can afford them, so I don't really have an excuse. I should just be keeping them with me at this point. Because I don't have one. Alright. I should go and buy one from a from a merchant. To the table of Lost Grace to talk with D, and then to a merchant to buy a stone sword key. That is a rhyme. Those who live in death should be left well alone. All the more should you spy a mariner among their number. Oh, I was, I was about to be disappointed. I was about to be so disappointed and just go, oh, he's just saying the same thing. Show him death root. Well, well. Another fool who won't listen to reason, eh? But with a prowess for weed in death root. Hmm. How would you like to earn the strength of beasts? If you're inclined to haunt more of those who live in death and weed their death root, then I'll introduce you to Garank. The beast clergyman. I have a matter of my own to attend to. And the beast himself wishes for someone to take my place. What say you? Uh, I am just writing down names, so hold on a second. Uh, Garank, the beast master guy, is literally something that we were just reading about on the Deathroot description. I will accept the introduction. Very well. 
Show me your map. I've marked the location for you. Of a hidden gateway. It will lead you to Garank, the beast clergyman. A red mark was made on the map. That's so cool. Where is it? Oh, he's right there. Sending gate. A hidden passageway. And we can go just through Summon Water Village to get there too. That's very, very cool. I like that a lot. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, where's a merchant that I can buy the, a key from? I'm pretty sure this merchant here has one. So I'm gonna, we'll go for that. And then we'll go back to Summon Water Village to have a look. Actually, shit, I should, probably should have talked to D some more. He might have had something else to say. All right, I've just written down the death route information. And that he's going to introduce us to the beast clergyman. Garank, the beast clergyman. Around Kaelid Ruins. There you go. Pe trying to piece together our NPC storylines as, as much as possible with what we find. And obviously we're still in a situation where we still haven't found Lanya for that poor, for that poor sod. Who really wants her to be found. Wait a minute. The Asiofra River Well. Oh, yes, right. That's how we got to this location in the first place. <sighs> Never mind me. We're going to just end up going to that same place again, are we? I'm like, where's this? Not getting confused with Siofra itself. I know that, but I, for, for some reason I thought that I hadn't been in that well in particular. Having a having a silly tired moment. Oh, where's this merchant? There he is. Mark your merchants on your map, people. Ah. Hello. How oh, nice, please. And of course, this is the one that doesn't have the fucking key. <laughs> he doesn't have a key. Beast lore pot and exalted flesh. I will. I will buy these from you, though. I'll buy these from you at least. Ah, how nice these. And now I take my leave of you. To find another merchant <laughs> who will sell me things. Uh, there's a merchant at the isolated. Ah, this one. This one sells. I think he's got two. I think he's got two keys. I don't know why I just haven't been buying the keys when I find them. Back. Unusual. Did this aged merchant have something that caught your eye? That is. That is very true. All right, you've got three. I'm going to buy all three from you, sir, if you don't mind. 2,000 each, right? So, 6,000. Thank you. Thank you for your keys, sir. The safe journey. Oh, you... you... I will. The safest... The safest of journeys, my friend. So we go back to the Summon Water Village outskirts because there is a place for us to put a key in. Just one of many places for us to put a key in, really. <laughs> those are, uh, those are other things I think I've uh, I should be marking on the map, and I've kind of failed to do so. Seems like it would make a lot of sense to mark out those things, don't you think? Oh, hello. What the fuck? Are you an enemy? You are an enemy. Ah, oh. I was about to get like really 
confused there. I was like, what the hell is going on here? They're having a little secret conversation. You see them having a little secret conversation. I thought it was going to end up being like a... It could have been a cool NPC interaction. But no. Just some skelly boys having a skelly chat, you know? Have I been down there? Yeah, that's the third church. But there's also the sending gate down there. Good to know. Alright, let's head into these ruins and see what's in here with their... with our little stone sword key secret. Where is it? Here it is. Hiya! Stone sword key, in you go. Let's have a look and see what's in here. Turtle friends. Hello, turtle friends. How are we doing? They're so cute. Okay, to a chest. A green turtle talisman. Nice. Raises stamina recovery speed. A stamina recovery talisman. Talisman in the shape of a green turtle. Turtles are known as a nutritious ingredient, symbolic of inexhaustible power. However, those who hold turtles to be wise creatures consider the practice of eating their meat to be barbarous. Nice, dude. I love all of you. I'm sorry for the ones of you that I have killed. It has been for the sake of item gathering. Please note that I pay my respects to the turtle kind. That's cool. So that just led us to a, tr to a nice little treasure. A nice little treasure. And I think with that one, guys, that will be this episode of Elden Ring. I will bring this one to a close. I'm going to travel to the Table of Lost Grace to to round this one out. I'll see if D has anything f further to say. What is it? Still milling about. The map indicates where the gateway is hidden. It will lead you to Garank, the beast clergyman. I love this guy's armor so much. It's just so cool and weird. So cool and weird. But yeah, we will See if we can upgrade some final pieces well, of armor. Where have you been hiding? I took you for dead. No matter, it's all the same. Lay out your arms then. I've barely been gone, mate. Um, all right, I don't have, ah, oh, I just need more, more money. Hang on. Let me sell you some runes. Just need some more money, that's all. There we go, it's actually selling my, my stuff now. Um, let's upgrade my claws some more. Perfect. That will do a little bit more damage now. And then also the Shotel on upgrade because weapons that will actually go with my, with my class. And once I upgrade that to a plus two, the decks will go to a C scaling, which is pretty cool. There you go. Okay. With that one, guys, I am going to bring this episode of Elden Ring to a close. Thank you so much for watching. It's now 5 a.m. It's been a nice session. Thank you so much for joining me in the early hours of the morning to play some Elden Ring. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, again, exploration, still getting boss fights, cool stuff, lore. We find stuff wherever we go. Never a dull moment. And then when you're just exploring, it's just nice. It's just nice. This game is so good. This game is just so good. Um, we've we've got to go over here. We've got to go over here. We've got to go over here. We've got all of this. World's our oyster, baby. We've got so much to do. We've discovered some really cool stuff this episode that I'm, I'm glad I decided to jump in and, and, and record. I, I never regret it. I never regret it. Feels good. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. And I'll see you next time.